everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video is my top three most used, very beginner friendly patterning techniques. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing to do here is to trace my darted woven block onto some standard parcel paper. And to use all three of these techniques, you don't have to have a block. You could use a standard commercial pattern, as long as the apex is clearly marked. Making sure I'm adding in all of my markings, my dart legs, my sleeve notch, and the all-important apex point. Drawing in, first of all, my waist dart from the waist to the apex and then that shoulder dart from the apex to the shoulder. So that's my tracing complete. So the first technique here is to reposition a dart. So for this example, I'm going to move the shoulder dart to the side seam. So measuring down from the underarm point two inches, giving myself a little dot, and then drawing in my new dart position from the apex to that dot. So the next step is to close that shoulder dart. So to do that, I'm cutting through one of the dart legs and also right through that new line I've drawn for my side seam dart. So cutting right up to the apex, but not through the apex, giving myself a little hinge there. And then at the shoulder, laying one dart leg over the other making sure everything is nice and flat and sticking everything down. So I've just popped some fresh paper in underneath. So you can see here, the result of closing the shoulder dart opens up that lovely new dart position on the side seam. So now I just have a couple more things to do before I can sew this pattern up. And one is to give myself that little triangle you can see at the waist dart at the side seam. So to do that, I'm just creasing that bottom dart leg, laying it over the top, running my tracing wheel along the side seam, drawing in my little triangle. And now that that's done, I'm ready to cut out my pattern. And then the last thing I have to do is just to reduce the length of my darts. So I'm measuring from the apex down the darts about an inch and a half, giving myself a little dot and drawing in my new dart legs. And with that, this pattern is complete. So my shoulder dart has been moved to the side seam, my dart length has been reduced, and I've just sewn up one half of this pattern so that you can see what it looks like on the mannequin. So I have my two darts, one at the waist, one now at the side seam. They've both been moved slightly away from the apex, giving a lovely flattering shape. And I thought it might be useful to show some examples of real garments that I've made using this dart position. So this first one is a simple shift dress made from the same woven block. It's had the same treatment in terms of repositioning darts. So for my second example, the starting point here was the cap sleeve kimono block. Again, it's had exactly the same treatment in terms of repositioning the shoulder dart to the side seam. It has that same waist dart, but a very different look. And then for my last example, this is actually the top I'm wearing today. So the base of this one is the raglan block. Again, I've moved that shoulder dart to the side seam, but this time I've omitted the waist dart. So three examples of three very different looking garments, all using exactly the same technique, repositioning a dart. So back to the mannequin for technique number two. So for this one, I'm going to show how I reduce gape. So the woven block you've seen at the start is designed to have a sleeve inset into it. And in order for the bodice and sleeve to be nice and comfortable on, there's a little bit more room added into the armhole. So if I wanted to sew this pattern up as a sleeveless design, I would have a little bit of gape there. So off camera, I've traced out my pattern, 
close the shoulder dart and moved it to the side seam. So to remove that little bit of gape you've seen on the mannequin, I'm going to measure up from my sleeve notch about a centimetre or so and then draw a line from that position to the apex and then cut on that line giving myself that same little hinge I had before and then overlap one side over the other by about five millimeters or so and you'll see here that overlap opens up that side seam dart a little bit more so making sure everything's laying nice and flat and sticking everything down and then off camera I filled in that dart, reduced its length just like I did before and now the last thing I have to do here is just to smooth off that curve on the underarm. Remove the excess paper and this one's ready to sew up. So that gape I had previous at the underarm has been moved into the side seam dart. So you can see here it's much smoother, much closer to the body. And I have a couple of examples of garments I've made where I've used this same technique. So for this first example I've used that same woven block. So I've moved that gape into the darts and then omitted them in the sewing. And then for this next example the base I started with here was the dress block. I've given myself princess seams this time and removed the gape on both the front and back armhole. And all of the examples I'm showing here, I've already done videos on how I sewed them up. I shall leave those linked in the description box below. So that completes technique number two, reducing gape. So now for the third technique, I wanted to show how to transform a dart. And the example I'm going to use today is transforming darts to gathers. So using the same base pattern as I've just drafted, I'm first of all going to mark where I want my gathers to be. So popping in a dot there at the centre front neck point. Drawing a line from the apex to that dot. And the next step is to open up that line and my two darts. So cutting to the apex but not through it. I want to give myself that same little hinge I gave myself before cutting one of the dart legs on my waist dart, laying one leg over the other, opening up that space at the neck and then repeating on the side seam dart. Giving myself that little hinge, laying that bottom leg over the top, opening up that space a little bit further at the neck. So I've just given myself some fresh paper underneath that space and now to finish the neck I'm first of all going to give myself a straight edge right at that centre front only for about a centimetre or so and then from there give myself a nice curved line up to the neck. that excess paper and now the last thing I have to do here is to mark in where my gathers will be. So I'm going to gather down all of that new space and about an inch and a half extra. This will just give me enough room to gather all that fabric down. Pop in a little notch there and here just measuring from the shoulder neck point to that first line and for this pattern it's four and a half inches. So I'm doubling that four and a half inches because this pattern is cut on the fold. So whenever I come to sew this up, I know once I've gathered between my notches, the measurement of my neck should be nine inches. So that completes technique number three. So I've transformed both the waist dart and that side seam dart into neck gathers. So I have two examples to show for this technique and in this first one I used the raglan block base, I reduced gape at the armhole and transformed all of the darts into the neck and for this second example I used the raglan block base again but this time instead of putting those gathers into the neckline I've used exactly the same steps and moved them to the waist. 
So that completes technique number three, transforming a dart. So I've shown how to move a dart, how to reduce gape, and how to transform a dart. And with these three really basic, really beginner friendly techniques, you could come up with any amount of designs. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks.